Did you ever wonder how to calculate the return on investment on your marketing spend as an agent? We're gonna go over that today in four easy steps. It's gonna take us about 10 minutes, and by the end of it, you'll be an expert at calculating exactly what your return on investment is on each section of your marketing spend. So let's get started. Hey, this is Hank Sorensen with Go Get a Listing. Today, we're gonna to go over how to calculate return on investment on your marketing spend. If you're the typical agent, then you're devoting uh, marketing dollars toward various avenues of return. Hopefully, getting a return on each one of those uh, avenues that you're investing money in. So what we're gonna do today is go over the four steps on how to calculate the return on your investment to make sure that you're actually getting a positive return on the money that you're spending. The very first thing that you have to do is source all of your business. If you have not sourced your business, you cannot do this analysis. And when I say source your business, what I mean is do a look back over the past 12 months and find every single source of business that you've actually closed gross commission income or GCI from. So you'll be able to look back and say, okay, that closing was directly from my database. That closing was directly from a Zillow lead. That closing was directly from a mailer that I sent out. And if you don't know the answers to all of this, really simple and it gives you an opportunity to reach out and contact your database, call them and say, hey, you know, thank you for doing business with me eight months ago. Uh, can I ask, where did you hear about me from? Very simple touch, gives you an opportunity, like I said, an excuse to reach out and contact your database again, and gives you a valuable point of information that you're gonna move forward with. So let's operate under the assumption that your business came from three different places that we're gonna analyze today. The first is from your database. Many of you should be getting uh, business from there already if you're not. Number two, some Zillow leads. Many of you have purchased a zip code or two from Zillow, so we'll go through that analysis. And then third is mailers that you send out, maybe canvassing a community or some just listed, just sold postcards that you sent out uh, you know, in response to some sales or listings uh, that you did or took. So let's go through this analysis. The first thing that, well, the second step that you're gonna go through is you're gonna calculate the, the gross commission income that you received from each individual source. So let's say that your database, you generated $50,000 in gross commission income in the preceding 12 months. We're always gonna do a, a rolling 12 months analysis, but we're, we're gonna look at it quarterly. And I'll go back into that toward the end of the video. So database $50,000, that's usually gonna be a, a pretty safe bet that this is gonna be the most because if you're a good agent, you should be contacting your database. Hopefully they're sending you referrals, additional clients, et cetera. So Zillow, um, we're gonna put 25,000 toward Zillow gross commission income received in the past 12 months. And then uh, on your mailers, we're gonna put $20,000. So if you add all this up, this is $95,000. Ballparkish, that's about a $4 million producing agent-ish, somewhere around there, depending on what brokerage you're with and what the compensation models are. So we're just gonna call this $95,000 on gross commission income from these three sources, database, Zillow, and mailers. So the next step, we've gotta calculate our costs on each one of these. So stay with me here, don't get lost in the math. It's very simple, if you just go through it, let's get into it, okay? So the database, the database is usually gonna have two elements to it. Number one, the product, and number two, the labor. So let's talk about the product first. Every database is gonna cost you something. Uh, very rarely are they free. Uh, even if they're offered through your current broker, usually there's some type of monthly desk fee or some allocation of the desk fee toward the CRM toward the uh, customer uh, relationship management database. So you've got to put a cost to the database. Very rarely is it free. Sometimes it is, but very rarely is it actual free. So you've got to put a hard cost to it. So, and again, these are all just hypothetical numbers. Use your own numbers, but for purposes of today, I'm going to use $200 a month. And what that amounts to is $2,400 a year. Okay. Now, that's the actual cost of the database. We've also got to talk about labor, so let's talk about that. You could be devoting your time and not have an inside sales agent, an ISA, 
calling out on your database. And if you do, that's fine. You know, many agents do that. Go ahead. If you're contacting your database, your time is worth something. Your time is not worth zero because the opportunity cost of that is that you could be spending that time doing something else that is dollar productive. And so contacting your database is definitely something that's dollar productive. So we've got to, we've got to attribute a cost to that. So the easiest way to do it is to see what the open market on a retail basis would charge for similar activities. So say you're doing two hours a day of contacting your database. What would you know, third party vendors that have ISA companies charge for that similar time? And I've looked at a few different companies, feel free to research your own. I'm not gonna name any here because frankly, nobody's paying me to make this video. So um, what I've been able to come up with is ballpark on the labor costs. You're looking at about $750 a month plus 10% of the gross commission income that's realized by the phone calls that they're making on your behalf. So let's translate this into actual costs. What that would be, if you annualize it, $750 a month equals $9,000 if you add it up, and then 10% of the gross commission income of your database, which was $50,000, 10% of that would be plus $5,000. So that's $14,000 right there. So you take your $14,000 plus your $2,400 and you're gonna get $16,400. So your database cost annually to you is $16,400. That includes the cost of the actual database and the labor that is attributable to you soliciting that database on an annual basis trying to get business out of it, okay? And again, I'm guessing this is about two hours of phone calls per day from an ISA company if they were doing that on your behalf. Um, so the next one is Zillow. Zillow, uh, very easy. Let's say you're spending $600 on a Zillow spend on a monthly basis. That comes out to $7,200 annually. And on your mailers, let's say that you're spending $500 a month and that's gonna be $6,000 annually. So you've got, you sourced your business, you've calculated the gross commission income on all of the different sources of your business, and then you've calculated the costs on how you brought that money in. So the last step, number four, is we're going to divide gross commission income by the cost. So we're gonna take the database at $50,000 and divide that by the $16,400 right here, okay? And then on Zillow, we're gonna take the $25,000 and we're gonna divide it by the 7,200. And on your mailers, we're gonna take the $20,000 and divide it by the $6,000. And by now, many of you have already gotten your calculators out, but I'll go ahead and put the numbers here for you. It's 3.05, 3.47, and 3.33. And what this means is your return on investment on each one of these uh, spends on the cost you spent 16,400 on your database on an annual basis, you get a 3.05 times return on your database. You spent 7,200 annually on Zillow, you got a 3.47 times return on Zillow, and then that on your mailers. The reason that we do this exercise is over time, you wanna find out, of course, for obvious reasons, what your best marketing spend is for you to do on a consistent basis. So in theory, your money would potentially gravitate toward that 3.47. Now, before you rush out and buy a bunch of different Zillow zip codes, a word of caution, you should always do this analysis on a rolling 12 month basis or a rolling quarterly basis, but look back 12 months, okay? So you should be looking back three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, and do that analysis every single quarter. And you should be looking at these numbers. What you're looking for in this are dips or jumps, okay? Those are the big things that you're looking for. If there's some reason there's a big dip in one of these numbers, there's a reason why. 
Is there a big jump in one of these numbers? There has to be a reason why. Dig into the weeds, find out what it is. And if it's legitimate, then you can put more money toward there if it's a jump. If it's a legitimate dip, obviously take money away from it. The final thing that I'll leave you with, if you wanna make these numbers go up over here, any of these numbers go up, there are three things that you can do. Number one, you have to increase revenue, meaning gross commission income. So for example, on the database, if your cost is the same, 16.4, but this 50,000 becomes 60,000 over here, then this number becomes higher. So one way to increase these numbers over here is to have the numerator, the gross commission income, the revenue, go higher. Number two, your cost goes lower. So these costs, which are all in the, in the denominators over here, if they go lower, then these numbers automatically go higher. The third thing is not directly um, attributable, but it does, uh, it, you will see it in the numbers, is efficiency, okay? If on the uh, database, this 750 a month, if they have a certain conversion rate, say you do hire an ISA company and they are on that payment schedule, and they're earning the 750 a month plus 10% of the GCI, as they become more familiar with the scripts that you give them, if they're improving efficiency over time, that instead of in the first week where they were dialing out and talking to, uh, or potentially 50 calls a day and say two hours, now they're making 75 calls a day, you're automatically gonna have more hookups because they're more efficient with your scripts and with more hookups on phone calls, you should directly see that revenue increase with the cost staying the same. And you always want that. If the cost is gonna stay the same and the revenue goes up, you win. So increase the revenue, reduce the cost, and uh, improve the efficiency. Those numbers are always gonna go up. So this is how to calculate the return on investment on your marketing spend on a consistent basis. And remember, we're gonna review this quarterly uh, in order to get the best insights out of your business. Click the button below that says subscribe. Click on the bell so that you can get notified when I drop additional videos. And thanks for tuning in today.